To sort it all out, I'm joined by the director of the public policy program at Hunter College, Basil Smichel, and Javier Lacayo, a Democratic political consultant. So before we get to the governor's race, in the middle of this whole thing, we have the former governor <laughs> of New York deciding he wants to make a political comeback. What do you guys make of it? And also the timing, like in the middle of a political campaign? Well, Marsha, you know, I think that uh, governor, the former Governor Cuomo uh, has always been a very ego-driven individual, so I'm not surprised that he's trying to insert himself uh, into the dialogue. But uh, look, it, it's, it's still, I think, that there's an, uh, an appetite within the Democratic Party for fresh leadership, for, you know, a fresh perspective. And, and I just don't think that, you know, Cuomo is necessarily going to get the reception that he's hoping for. There is a bit of a precedent. You know, he, if you remember, Elliot Spitzer went on current TV afterwards and then had his show on CNN. But I think there was a little more time in between him leaving office and when he got these, uh, these, these media uh, opportunities. So I think on, on the one hand, you know, the governor, uh, former governor, Governor Cuomo wants to begin that mea culpa tour. He's already started. This is part of the rehabilitation. I don't know that it works because the voters well, want something no a little mea different. But there's no mea culpa yet. Well, <laughs> well, that's the other <laughs> problem, right? That there's still sort of his uh, digging his heels in and still talking about the, the the attorney general's investigation and how flawed it was. So that that's that's going to contribute to his problem. But I also say very quickly, you know. I think depending on how Democrats do in the midterms this year, he's going to want to find a way to sort of create a lane for himself to have an alternative voice. I don't know if it works, but I think that's what he's interested in. It's also possible, Marshall, right, that he's trying to change the subject. I think we saw last week, you know, Charlotte Bennett filed a lawsuit against him. He now has two civil lawsuits pending, even though there haven't been any criminal charges filed. Um, and so it's possible that he's just trying to change the conversation a bit. But what about his contention that right now both parties are extreme? and he wants to find some middle ground and that he's going to back, and I quote him now, the right, his <laughs> quote, yeah. the right candidates. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, think, think, do you think anybody wants to take his money? <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people that are uh, would be happy to take but his money. Is that, but is that going to be a winning argument that we have to move from the extremes of right and left and come into yeah. the center? Look, I think that there is certainly an appetite for folks to sort of stop the, the bitter infighting, right, that we're seeing in politics every day. But from the perspective where Cuomo is coming from, he's trying to portray what happened to him or what he did to, you know, dozens of women as being some sort of part of cancel culture, right, which is just not the case. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think he's going to have a trouble sort of making the argument that he was a, a victim of being canceled, um, especially when we, we've had such an overwhelming and really compelling testimony from so many women that, that were really victims at his hand. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the governor's race. We have a situation where one candidate is offered a debate and the governor and the other candidate says, oh, no, that's not enough. We have to do more and he won't accept the one debate. Do you think that they have an obligation to debate? And do you think that ultimately Lee Zeldin will take the governor up on her offer of one debate? Yeah, I, listen, I think if you're the governor right now, this is exactly what you want to do. Um, if you feel and have been arguing that Lee Zeldin is too extreme, going back to the other question, if you argue that Lee Zeldin is too extreme, don't put yourself in a position where it, it looks like he's going to try to sort of overpower. If you look at the other debates, that's kind of his style. So do you want that... That, that, that moment where he's pushing at you, overpowering you, or attempting to do so, and even though you're coming with great points and staying poised, it may not necessarily look to the voter that you're, that you're winning. Uh, so I think from her perspective, it's the right thing to do. From the voters, they're going to want something more. Javier? And look, one debate, I know that Lee Zeldin is making a, a, a big hubble over it, but one debate is pretty standard, right, for general elections going into a gubernatorial race. Um, I well, it's the standard that Andrew Cuomo used <laughs> Just for the record, sure. because he did both of those debates here at WCBS TV. So, but it's you know. also a standard that I think we see with incumbents across the country, right? And especially someone like Kathy Hochul, who is now uh, almost 20 points ahead, you know, if you believe the most recent poll, there's really very little incentive for her to sort of elevate Zeldin any more than she absolutely needs to. So I think she's totally um, in the right place to, to, to sort of just be good with the one debate. Yeah. Is she vulnerable on crime? I don't think so. I actually don't think so. I think many voters see that as 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 the issue with their mayors. So I think um, the voters look to Mayor Adams and other municipal municipal mayors for that. Not so much her. Yeah, and I think Marsha, that, that's exactly right. What Basil said, and and I think what's happened and what we're going to see in November is that this 
this year's election has really become nationalized, right? The most recent Siena poll showed that the top two concerns are the economy and inflation, and number two were actually threats to democracy, yeah. right, before, sure. before crime. And so I think what's happening at the national stage, what national Republicans are doing, is really going to color this election more than anything else. Well, see, that was the question I was going to ask. So she uses his connection to Trump. Is that going to hurt him? Um, because she's yeah. trying to tie him to former President Ab Donald Trump. Absolutely, and look, I think this should be a pretty good year for Republicans in theory, right? You know, you have Democrats holding control of uh, you know all three levels levers of power in, in 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 Washington. But what's happened that is kind of unprecedented is having a former president that is still so at the center, a very divisive former president that is still so at the center of the entire political discourse, right? So this shouldn't be about Trump, but for many voters, it's still going to be about stopping the Trump party. So we're going to have to leave it right there, I'm sorry to say, but thank you both for joining me today. We'll be right back with your point.